you are here with us today. Um, I was thinking a lot this past week, it's probably been a couple of weeks actually, I've been thinking about how during this time that we are living in right now, it could certainly look like there is a lot of loss. Uh, I know many of us uh, feel like we've experienced uh, a lot of loss. But when I look at this idea of loss through the lens of spiritual truth, through the lens of the science of mind, I have to come back to what is foundational, that this idea of loss is actually an illusion. Now, I know people have moved away, and it's heartbreaking. And people we love have passed through the veil into the next experience of life. It is also heartbreaking. One of the things, you know, that we learn as an adult is that people's lives People we love very much, their lives move them in other directions. And people we love very much, their soul has a journey of its own, and sometimes they have the audacity to die on us. Oh, boy. But truth says that all of that is taking place out here in the world of form, and therefore all of that is an illusion. Uh, so much of what I um, look back at, at what I'd been taught, the things, you know, the way to live my life, I think was probably similar to, to what you received. And then if we did certain things, it was like, you know, this is the prescription. If you do this and this and this, then you're going to be really happy in life. You know, and so for me, it was like, well, you know, you got to be smart and you get a good education and then you get a good job and you buy a house and you buy a better house and you get a relationship and then you get a better relationship and on and on and on and you work hard and you work hard. But you know, one of the things you realize is without this component of spiritual consciousness, a lot of that doesn't really make any difference. It doesn't make us a more loving person. It doesn't make us a happier person. Uh, it certainly doesn't make us a more fulfilled person. Again, in the science of mind teaching, we teach that everything outside of us, everything in the world of form, everything that is a manifestation is an effect. And an effect can never be the cause. We may treat an effect like it's the cause. We may even mistakenly give it some power. And that, that, that is a problem. See, effects are wonderful. I mean, think about all of the effects in your life, the people and the things. Oh my God, I love my effects. I love my stuff. I love my peeps, just like you do, I'm certain. But you know, at the level of form, as wonderful as all the effects in our life are, they're always, always changing. And we're kidding ourselves if we think they are not. Right? So what I want to do, what I personally want to do, is I want to invite God into my life in an even greater way all the time, every day in a greater way, in a greater way. Now, Catherine Ponder and Charles Fillmore and certainly Emma Curtis Hopkins all talk about what happens when you do this, when you say, I want to be the love of God manifest on the earth. I want to be a place of, of joy. I want to be a place of healing. I want to be that space of forgiveness. You declare that into the universal mind and you know what's going to come up? Everything unlike it. Oh, I hate that. I hate that, but that is called chemicalization. Now, the thing is, that stuff is there. It's in our thinking, perhaps subjectively, and that's what needs to be released and let go so that greater spiritual truth can take root within us and be expressed in our life. So I understand, you know, I say one thing, but the opposite shows up. But remember, the opposite is showing up so we can have healing, so we can really move into a greater expression of life. I think this is necessary. It's just necessary. We can't suppress things and build any kind of solid foundation on top of them. We have to bring what's within to the surface, anything that has to be changed, anything that contradicts the spiritual truth. It's got to be brought up to re be released, brought up to be brought to the light for healing. So this is what stands between you and a greater expression of truth. You know, we may have tried. We may have tried very sincerely, but I come to realize we cannot hide from our growth. It's what our soul is here to do. So any unhealed places in consciousness, you know that relationship you don't want to think about, that situation you don't want to give attention to, that, I don't know, email you don't want to open, whatever it may be, any unhealed place in consciousness, the light of truth is what we are seeking to shine on those places. And, and here, once we identify that, that's where we begin to say, all right, here's an area 
I am desirous. I want to be loving here. I want to be blessing here. I want to be grateful here. I want to be forgiving here. And I know, absolutely, I understand that sometimes that's the furthest thing from our mind in the moment, but that's the work. That's the work, to love, to bless, to give thanks, to heal, to forgive. And doing this is, in this very unique time that we are living in, we certainly notice if if we're preoccupied with meaningless things. And I will share my confession with you that sometimes during this time of COVID, I get preoccupied with meaningless things. But I do notice that I'm getting better at catching myself doing that. And then I get on track with things that are more important to me personally. Right? So I tell myself not to major in the minors, you know, because the spiritual path is filled with paradox. You know, that we say, well, it's all God and don't sweat the small stuff, you know. But, but, but please ask. Ask when you sit in quiet, when you're meditating, when you're thinking and having some reflective time, ask what's real, what's true. You know, there, there, hmm. there's no real change in our lives. I'm talking about radical change without this component of our being willing to love a little bit more. Sometimes I think we are in such denial about how powerful our minds are. But this is the great gift of God to each and every one of us. Our minds are the most powerful thing we have to work with to evolve our life, to heal our life, to grow our life, to make our life what we want it to be more of. So every thought you think, every thought I think, is taking form at some level. We may not see the manifestation of it immediately. Why? Because physical manifestation is the last level where things appear. Things cook in consciousness for a long time and become acceptable and real and comfortable to us before they show up out here in the outer world. You know, sometimes I think, yes, that, that we, we so um, minimize what our minds are capable of. No, specifically, every thought I think is either adding to my experience of heaven on earth or my thinking is adding to my experience of hell on earth. Hmm. And that's probably so for you too. So in this moment, what I choose to think, I'm going to add more heaven, or I'm going uh, to experience more heaven, or in this moment, what I think, I'm going to add more to hell, or I'm going to experience more of hell. Because we know in the science of my teaching, heaven and hell are not places we go when we die. Heaven and hell are states of consciousness. So heaven is an awareness of our oneness with God and each other, and we act from a place of love. And hell is not that. Hell is we are separate from God, we are separate from each other, I'm only thinking about me, and I'm not trying to be a loving presence in the world. You know, loss is so often very painful for us, you know, and, and my good, my joy, my love, my abundance does not come from anything outside of me or anything outside of you. It comes from our conscious connection with God. Right? Um, that source that's everywhere we say, but also right within us. You know, it is illusion to think that something outside of me is the source of my good. It, it is illusion to think that something or someone outside of me is the source of my love, the source of my joy, the source of my happiness. If I think something outside of me is my source, it seems to me that the universe acting on behalf of my highest and greatest good, will find a way to teach me the truth that it is not. We are not here just to hang out. You know, your soul didn't come here to earth school just to hang out. Because, oh, I just want to hang out. Can it be easy? No, it can't. It just can't. If we think, well, I don't intentionally set out to hurt other people, that should be enough. Well, I'll tell you, that's a start. That's, that's a good thing, um, but I don't think it's enough, honestly. You know, because um, at, in this time that we are living in, we have, to be, we have to ask, do I intentionally set out to love other people? I think not wanting to hurt them is not enough. Particularly at this time we are living in right now, it has to actively be our intention on a daily basis to love other people. What people? All people. All people. Let me say that again in case you didn't hear it. All people. 
<laughs> because what we teach in the science of mind is what's always manifesting is our intention. What do I intend to love, to heal, to bless, to serve, to, to be the presence of peace? Now, don't feel guilty if this has not been so, because you know, guilt is just not productive, right? G guilt is a way of staying in the problem, right? So just wipe guilt off the plate. We're more aware now, we say awareness is curative, so now that we're aware, this is what we're gonna do. We have to realize it can be different. I have to realize I, me, myself, I can be different because a changed mind is an extraordinarily powerful thing, right? Everybody knows, everybody knows, and everyone I know has, has, has suffered, right? Has suffered enough, don't you think? I mean, have you ever gotten up in the morning and say, you know, God, I just haven't suffered enough. Today would be a great day to bring a little more suffering into my life. Yeah, a little more mental pain, a little more emotional pain. Oh, and please, definitely increase the physical pain. Nobody ever says that, right? Yes, there have been uh, mistakes along the way for all of us, I'm certain. But the mistakes contain the seed of healing, always. The mistakes contain the seed of the solution. If I'm willing to sit with that, it can be revealed. So in the Old Testament, in Genesis, it says that Abel, you know Cain and Abel? That Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So Abel is a shepherd, and Cain is a farmer. And God says to Cain, where is your brother? And Cain replies, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Well, the answer is yes. Yes, we are. We are, you know, whoever is more conscious, whoever is more in alignment with spiritual truth, whoever thinks about it, we are our brother's keeper. You know, so in, in one sense, in the highest sense, everybody is experiencing what their soul came here to experience, even if it doesn't look good. And the other part of this spiritual paradox is, even though everyone is experiencing exactly what they're supposed to experience, if it catches our attention, it's not a mistake that it catches our attention. We are probably supposed to be, probably like very much, we are supposed to be getting involved to be part of that healing, okay? Um, I love the idea of giving our life to God. And it's a big idea, and I think it's maybe hard to wrap our head around, but what, what that means to me, very simply, about giving my life to God is that I'm giving my life to love, that every day I will do my best, every day it is my intention to put love force first into the world because that force of love is what will heal not only us, our life, our body, but it will heal our world. You know, on my own, doing it my way, I will mess up. How do I know that? Because I have in the past, I have messed up really, really well. Uh, so I, I know, um, I know that doesn't work, doing it on my own. You know, my old thinking was, well, I could serve God, I could serve love, I could serve truth, or I could probably be happy in this life, but I don't think it could be both. Well, I thought, because, why? Because I thought serving God would somehow mean that I'm limited. I thought that serving God would somehow mean that I, I lack, that I, that I would probably have to be poor, right? Well, I, now, in my study of truth, I realize that that is completely wrong. You know, I thought God would take away my fun. <laughs> well, no, absolutely not. Joy is what God's love feels like. Joy is what God's love feels like. So when you're experiencing joy in your life, that is the very love of God manifesting in you, right? So I give my life to God, and, and what happens? My life got better. God said, okay, all the things that you are interested in, I can use them. I can use all of that. So when we have a crisis, a heartbreak, um, a loss, a learning opportunity, I'll call it, you know, all of those things are a chance for us, an opportunity for us to surrender in a greater way. We lean into God. We move in a little closer to God. God that is my one and only source. This is what we are to remember. I believe with all my heart that as spiritual beings, we came here to give the love, the love of God that is within us to everyone, everyone, everyone. And in exchange, we receive the love of the universe back. 
So breathe in with me right now, and as you breathe in, just tell yourself you're breathing in the infinite love of God, the infinite love of the universe. Do that now. Breathe in that love and hold it for just a moment, and then as you exhale, feel that you are giving all of your love out to whoever in the universe would benefit from it. Yeah? So breathing love in, holding for just a moment, and then exhaling love out to whoever would benefit and be blessed by it. Join me in prayer. As we turn our attention inward now, remembering that right where we are, God is fully present. God that is love and truth and peace and power and wholeness and abundance. God that is everything is right here within each and every one of us. We are emanations of the Father, Mother, God. And in this awareness of our oneness with God, I also know that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life, that we are one. So what we do in our consciousness affects everyone and everything. So I speak the word for us that it is our intention today, not just to not hurt other people, but it is actively our intention to put love into the universe, however we do that. Not only to have love for ourselves and the people in our lives, our family, parents, and children, those we hold near and dear, but to have that unconditional positive high regard for everyone on the face of the earth, knowing that all are expressions of God. I claim this is the truth for each and every one of us. I claim healing in our lives for each and every one. I claim healing on our planet, that what needs to be healed is brought to the light, and healing is in fact taking place. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So all those things that pull at our attention, we say God is greater than all of this and that the love of God is the most powerful agency in the world and we infuse those situations that come into our mind with divine love, with blessing. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we are blessed by being together that there is healing for each and every one of us. So we give thanks in advance for the perfect solution to every problem. There is nothing in us that resists. We are surrendered fully. And with an open, gracious, full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth. And so it is. Together we all say, Amen. <laughs>